Hi, it's John. Welcome to today's video from Crafts by John UK. Today we'll be creating this cute sardines themed card with a friends stick together sentiment. And you can see it's quite interesting. It's got some shiny silvery sardines against a background of splatty blues and greens for a fishy effect. For today's project, we're going to be playing with this lovely cute sardine stump, which I got very cheaply from AliExpress. It's quite cute. It's just a little tin with three sardines in it and a few little nice sentiments. Glad we're tight, friends stick together and catch you later. So what I'm going to do first of all is make an interesting background. To do this, I'm going to take a piece of general white cardstock. This is about 250 GSM I think so can take some water without getting too screwed up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down. I always like to add a panel to my card rather than stamping on actual card stock card blank base. So I'm just going to cut this panel out 14 by 14 so that this is ready to adhere to a 15 by 15 or 6 by 6 card blank. So I'm just creating a panel there that is 14 centimeters square. Next, I'm gonna take my glass board because we're gonna get messy. So first of all, I've got some Distress Oxides here, Tumble Glass, Cracked Pistachio, Mermaid Lagoon, Faded Jeans, and Speckled Egg. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smooch and create a messy effect with these inks. So I'm gonna start with a bit of Distress Oxide, literally dabbing it around. Mermaid Lagoon, similarly, in amongst it all. And again, you don't need to create a huge area here because you're only gonna be working with a piece of card this size. There's no point wasting a whole load of ink on an area that you're actually not gonna use. So actually I've just used those three, Cracked Pistachio, Mermaid Lagoon and Faded Jeans. I'm looking at that thinking I've got enough colour. I'm going to take my little mini mister, which is super cute, which is filled with normal water. And I'm just going to give that a little spray. Now, because the ink pads are square, you end up with everything in a square shape, which we don't really want. So I often use my finger just to mix stuff together. What you'll see is lots of blobs. But then if you mist it again, you'll find that those blobs will melt out and you end up with a more random pattern. You can also swirl some of it together. Basically, get a bit messy. Always have to hand a piece of kitchen towel. Give it one more spray. And now we're ready to actually put our card into it. So centre your card pretty much so you've got coverage everywhere. Put it down. This first pass will be very wet, but will give you instant, interesting color. What we're gonna do now is use the pieces we've got left. So I'm gonna dry this with my heat tool, which is a standard Dovecraft one. Slightly off screen. I'm just gonna give that a bit of a dry. What you'll find as you dry it, it will stop the curl. I'm not sure if you can see that, but as I'm drying it, it's flattening it out. You can use whatever paper you want for this, watercolour paper, any basically. Once that's dry, we'll then go in again and just pick up some of those other areas for more interest. Keep moving the paper. You don't want it all in the same place. And move over your board with the mix. You see, you're starting to get a really interesting effect. What I'd suggest at this point is have a look which colours you're short of. I think that needs a little bit more of the cracked pistachio. So I'm going to just go in with the cracked pistachio. A little bit of water. And then just pick some of that up. I'm not touching the whole card down, because if I do that, I'll get the whole card full of ink. What I'm doing is just lifting it in certain places. 
Don't forget the edges. And now you can see, it's starting to look more interesting. I think that is actually quite nice. Just gonna smooch some of that edge. Don't be afraid of this. You can pretty much go as much as you want. That is quite a nice, interesting looking background and it's in the right tones for the fish. What I'm gonna do at this point is just use my clean cloth to wipe my board down. Clean as you go, I say. Move that out of the way. And now we're left with that, which is quite an interesting backdrop. That will look nice with the stamp on it. Again, using my heat tool, let's give it a good heat because we're gonna stamp, it needs to be perfectly dry. I'm heating from the middle out. I usually start in the middle and work my way out. Always heat both sides. That also helps with the curl. As you see, you're heating it, it's curling up like a flower. As you go around, that curl will become more pronounced. Don't worry about that though, it will flatten out. Systematically up and down, up and down. There you go, we have a beautiful blue lotus flower at this stage. I'll turn that over and now heat the back. As I said before, it will encourage it to flatten out. Use your hands, don't be afraid to add your hand heat. Not sure if you see on camera, but that is a bit flatter than it was. Alright, that should be relatively dry now. heat gun away now this is another little trick rolling the card like this will encourage it to flatten out a bit you need it to be flat before you can stamp on it what you could do you could make this background the day before put it under a pile of books but because we're quick and we've got no patience we're going to actually just go for it right that now is probably flat enough at this point what i'll do is use my little anti-static pad give it a good rub over this will also help dry any areas that aren't completely set yet but also it creates a good base for us to stamp keep your little anti-static pad in a little tupperware container give it a blow now i'm going to use my tim holtz stamping platform which is always great check before you start that you're on the clear side and we'll fix that in place. I always have a piece of paper behind because I just think it adds a little bit more depth. It lifts the paper up that you're stamping, basically stops any problems. I'm taking this stamp set. As I said, I got this from AliExpress, so it was a very cheap stamp set, but it's super cute. And I quite like to offset things. I know people, a lot of people put everything in the middle and it's very regular. I am a little bit quirky and I like stuff slightly off centre. So I'm going to go here with that stamp set and then the sentiment I'm going to use today is friends stick together because I think that is super cute and I'm going to put that aligned with my image just down the bottom. I'll move that up slightly. There you go. So that to me creates a nice image. The, the image is slightly offset. The text is also slightly offset. Okay, close your stamping platform to pick up the stamp. Don't be afraid to give it a bit of a press at this point. And then also, when you open your platform, just check that you haven't got any air bubbles underneath. Okay. The ink I'm gonna stamp with is good old VersaFine Onyx Black. I'll just remove my platform so you can see what I'm doing. See, I've checked that. I think I've got minimal air underneath. And then I'm gonna stamp. When you stamp, Make sure your ink 
you're using all different parts of your ink pad on all different parts of the stamp. If you've got any areas that you stamp repeatedly, so your pad hasn't got a nice juicy amount of ink, by moving it around, lots of little moves, you'll grab all your ink. Love this stamping platform, absolutely essential piece of kit. Give it a good press and also just wait a minute as well to let the ink sink into that paper. That paper's been very wet, should be quite receptive to ink, but always good to just give it a moment or two to settle. Let's have a look. What a beautiful image. This could be a little bit better. So I'm actually just gonna re-ink the sentiment. Actually, I might as well just do the whole thing again quickly. What I often find when you're using the stamping platform, if your magnet is near the sentiment, it will cause the sentiment stamp to not work so well. So just move that slightly. Boom, that's a bit better. Okay, take this out. And what we're gonna do straight away is emboss it with clear embossing powder. This is the standard wow. I always dip mine in. I know some people tip the pour on. I don't, I actually just tip it in. That way I think you get plenty of coverage. As usual, knock it off. The reason I'm embossing it in clear embossing powder is because I'm gonna color some of it in and I want those lines to be really nice and thick and vibrant. I keep my embossing powder in a big Tupperware. It's just easier to manage and it saves all that messing around with paper every time. Right, at this point, I'm just gonna move that out of the way. Good practice, I'm gonna clean my stamp just with my wet cloth. Use a wet cloth, don't use baby wipes. They're not good for the environment. They cost money, they clog up our drains. Okay. Put your stamp away. Right, done with the stamping platform for the moment. Let's put that away. What we're gonna do now is bring in the heat tool and heat this until we get that magic when the embossing powder does its work. Brings that black up so it's super vibrant. Working my way systematically around the image. Make sure I heat every bit of that and all the blacks are lovely and vibrant. Into the middle. Not too worried about the fish because we're actually going to cover them up. I'll explain that in a moment. Friends stick together. Always emboss the back as well. Just to make sure you haven't missed anything. Now, don't do anything with that for a moment to let it dry. What we're going to do, we're actually going to stamp the sardines on some silver paper because I think that would look quite good because sardines are quite silver. So I'm taking that off. I'm actually going to use my stamping platform for this. I'm just going to do it with the basic acrylic block. I've got an acrylic block that's roughly the right size. What I'm going to do is use my anti-static pad, just clean this silver, give it a blow. And then I'm not using any fancy ink for this. Some people would say, oh, you have to use stays on because you're stamping on silver. Absolute rubbish. Just basic black Versafine. I only need to stamp the top because that's the only bit I'm using. And just go in there and stamp that. Again, give it a second or two to get the image transferred properly. Now, this ink will move if you rub it because it's not stays on. However, I'm gonna show you a little trick. Cleaning my stamp, putting my stamp away. Look at all these good practices I'm teaching you. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna emboss this with black emboss. 
So I've got a little tub here of black primary ebony, regular. This isn't even the super fine stuff. I'm just gonna cover that. Cut that off. Now, because it's a normal embossed powder, you will get a few odd grains. That doesn't matter with this kind of image. Put your embossed powder back in its tub. No wastage and put that away so we don't knock it over. Now, if we're gonna heat this, paying particular attention to the fish because that's the bit we want. This will stay wet on here a little bit longer because it's mirroring paper. We just need to allow it to dry properly. So we're doing this at this stage, so it's got plenty of time to dry while we do other stuff. What I should do is cut them out, mount them on. It will also add to the 3D effect of the card when finished. Give it a little heat on the back. I think you can just see how nice and shiny and glossy that now looks. Set that aside for the moment. Bring back your main image. Give the disc a wipe as usual. And then I'm going to colour this with some... Pro markers, I think. So I've got my colouring stuff here. And what I'm going to do is pick out some greys because I think the tin would be grey. So I'm going to pick out my, I think, coal grey four, coal grey three. Um, always grab a blender when you do any colouring. I'm thinking the inside of the tin is going to be dark, so we get a nice contrast with the silver. The inside lining of the tin would be a lighter a lighter grey and then I think I'm going to echo the tones here of, of the blues and greens in the actual tub with maybe a sky blue and maybe a leaf green. Actually now I'm changing my mind I'm going to go for mint green. So I'm only going to use five colours. So first of all I'm going to do the dark inside. I think I want that a mid grey so I'm going to go with cool grey three and literally you're just working your way around here as you can see this is on top of already coloured so it's going to retain a little bit of the random nature of that background but we're just colouring you don't have to be too precise here remember we're going to cover these fish up the only bit you need to be careful of is the outer edge I'm colouring quite quickly, quite randomly. Now, in real life, these darker bits in the middle here would be full of shadow. So what I'm gonna do, take my cool gray four, just go around the edge a little bit, and then blend that in. Go back with the lighter color, and use the lighter color over the dark and it will create a bit of a blend. There we go. Uh, then I'm going to use the darker cool grey four on this roll back edge. What I'm going to do is go around the edge first to get a layer of colour. Then I'm going to use the flat end to colour a big area. Now what I want to do is I want to create a bit of an effect that this has been rolled back. So I want to get some natural lines in this. So I'm going to actually colour it in stripes. To get a bit of texture. And then simply go over it with my blender. Just to ease out those edges a little bit. I hope you can see I'm getting some quite nice stripes in there, particularly at that top edge. See that? And then for the bottom, we're going to colour this, I think, in a mint green. 
No, actually, yes, it is mint green. Yeah, it is. Again, edge carefully, main body, boom. This is quick card making, I don't mess about it. Again, going over those edges just to get a bit of color. Remember, because we embossed this, no run. With stamped images, always follow the line. You'll find once that ink dries and settles down, you've then got a little bit more tone around your stamped lines. Any areas where you see a hard edge from your colouring, just go over it again. The nature of this stamp and the rather flecky quality of it lends itself to this anyway. I'm going to go in on these edges with blue. And this blue is a bit dried up, actually. I think we're going to change that for another colour. What have we got in the tub? Let's have a look. Duck edge, that could be a bit light, I think. What about this one? That looks a better colour. This is cyan. Yeah, that's much better. These pens don't last forever, but they are damn good. I love Pro Markers. I do most of my colouring in either Pro Markers or Arteza. And you get such a lovely blend on these. Carefully, all the way along. All the way around the top. Boom. What I might do is just use the gray just give that a little bit of tone, a little bit of depth at the bottom. And again, then you go back in with the same color and just blend that slightly. And I've gone slightly over the edge there. That is why we always have our blender to hand. Just go with the blender, push that ink back in. When that's dry, you'll never notice it. There you go, pretty much gone. Okay, we need to color the winder. I'm gonna use the other gray. Cool gray four. There we go, quickly colored. Right, now I'm gonna deal with this. So I've got my silver stamped image. This is gonna sit on top, so I need to be on the inside of the lines. So I'm gonna cut this, and I'm gonna cut it pretty much halfway through the black line. So I can then put that over the top of the other line, create a seamless join. I hate fussy cutting. Anybody that knows me will know that I hate fussy cutting. But it's an essential part of card making, so you have to get over it. Always cut, I think, away from you. When you get an image like this that's got multiple little points, cut it down so that you're not managing a whole load of offcut in your hand. Like that. So go in here. Go in here. And then this way, always following the line. Cut into that corner until you can pull that cleanly out. Always check your corner just to make sure there's no leftovers. That one's cut, that one just needs it. Pull that out. We've got some little mouth here to cut. Boom. 
you can use the end. The only thing I find with the end, you do sometimes get a little bit of a blunt cut. There we go. Okay, get rid of all the rubbish. Now what I'm gonna do is get a piece of scrap paper and a black Sharpie and just go around the edges because what we don't want is any white on the edge of our cut image. Do this on the back. You will get a little bit of bleed on the front, but as it's quite a thick line anyway, that won't matter. There we go. And you can see now the edges are perfectly black, which is good. Back on our card. That's going to sit really nicely on top of that. So how I'm going to stick this down, just a bit of PVA glue in a nice little bottle with a pin top. So dot your glue on. A lot of people use all these different fancy glues. I use the cheapest, most awfully basic glue I can get from the range and decant it into these bottles. I make about 400 cards a year by that method, therefore I believe it works. Right, now, an essential part of card making is a decent pair of, of tweezers, sorry. I pick things up with tweezers because I'm a bit heavy-handed. And basically, I use tweezers to help me manoeuvre things. So we've got that roughly in position. Okay, and then again, I'm going to use my piece of white paper to just give that a good press down. Just make sure you give it a moment for that glue to stick. See the outline there. There you go. How cool does that look? What we're going to do now is we're going to use a sponge. I keep a pot with all my sponges in. It keeps them slightly juicy. And what we're going to do is pick out one of the colours we've used. So I think Mermaid Lagoon. This is Distress Oxide. Pick a sponge that's got vaguely the right colour on it. Take that sponge, check how much ink you've got, and then we're gonna just dirty the edges up a bit, just to add a little bit more interest. Well, you see I'm going along the edge here quite roughly, and the effect that that creates just gives us a slightly darker edge. Don't be afraid of using your ink. Always good if you keep it in a tone that you've used on the card. Do this as quickly as you want. It doesn't matter if you go over the edge slightly, it just creates more interest. What I also tend to do is just give it a little bit at the corners as well. There you go. There is our card pretty much done. I'm going to back this in black. I've got a little piece of black paper here that was a leftover. I'm going to use just basic double-sided tape. So double-sided tape into the corners. I will go all the way along on this because this card and paper is quite bent, as you can see. It needs plenty to hold it down and encourage it to straighten. This first layer that we're going to do is going to just go onto the black. So I'm actually going to put quite a lot of tape on here to encourage this to flatten and lay down. There's no precise laying of it, so we don't need to be too fancy. Boom. Give that a press. I always use my tweezers to pull off double-sided tape. I see people doing it on other videos, fanning around with their nails, trying for ages to get the tape off. I tend to do it quickly. Right, find a decent corner. Try and look which is your cut edge and which is your plain edge. Align it there. Again, probably you can see the top of my head. There we go. And always press it down on the back. You don't want to risk at this point in your project smudging anything.
that will encourage it with a bit more weight. And then what we're gonna do is cut this down. I always do my layers this way. I know some other people measure and cut bits out and then spend time trying to center. I'm a great believer in eyeballing it. Boom. And always work with the a piece that's decent that you can get some purchase on. Pressing down hard, do a light cut because you've not got a lot of paper under the ruler, then do a heavy cut. There we go. And then I'm going to stick this onto a six inch square card blank. Line that up. And then I always use a bone folder just to get a nice precise fold. Check it on the back, make sure it's in the right place. That's gonna sit on there nicely. So again, double-sided tape. And I will show you a trick that I learned from the wonderful Natasha Foote, who has a great YouTube channel and a lot of followers and offers really great card making advice. If you're a newbie, you're looking for lots of useful tips, Natasha Foote is your woman. She's a Kiwi from New Zealand, I believe. And she posts videos two or three times a week, which are absolutely brilliant. I'll put a link in the comments if I remember. So all four edges, and then you only really need one piece in the middle. Now, this time, this is the trick. Fold down ears. What this will do, this will allow you to lay your base with a little bit of wiggle room so that you can get it dead center. Put your card down, make sure it's opening the right way. Just have a look at it, make sure you've not got any dirty marks or anything. <laughs> so, lay it down gently on your tape so it's risen, and then just line it up by eye. Start with one edge, and then the other. Look at the gap top and bottom. That looks roughly right to me. Press down in the middle, pull the tape off, go along with your finger. Pull the tape off, go along with your finger. Pull the tape off, go along with your finger. Pull the tape off, go along with your finger. Now, take your bone folder and gently go along there and on the black on the colour, on the black. What this does, it presses down any cut edges and just creates a more professional finish. I can also see one other little problem here. We've got a little stray bit of black from where we cut. And what you can do is usually just poke that under. There we go. There's today's finished project. I'll just put that on a piece of white paper so you can see. And you can see the lovely effect that the silver gives us against the green. That's a really nice card made in about, what, 35 minutes? Anyway, if you like that and you enjoyed it and you like my style, please check my YouTube channel, like and subscribe, and I'll be posting other videos. Thank you very much.